Hey guys, I'm Glarung, and today I'm going to be giving you guys some insight on how Chen is used in a competitive environment. Chen is a hero that I believe to be wildly underrated. While there are tanks out there better than Chen in many ways, certain situations like he can bring more to the table than any other tank, in my opinion. Pair him up with an Illidan on a map like Cursed Hollow, and you can see how strong he really is. Today I'm going to be going over a replay where we decided to use Chen in a match we played from the ESL Major League. In this match, we were playing versus two arc, and in this video, I'll do my best to analyze primarily how we used Chen correctly and how we used him incorrectly, and just like kind of go over the mistakes we made and kind of explain what we can do better. I'm just going to give you guys some insight on Chen, and uh, I hope you guys enjoy this video, and I'll see you guys next time. Alright, in this match, we're playing on Cursed Hollow, and our team composition, in the draft we decided we wanted to go with Chen, Tychus, Uther, Illidan, and Vala. This team composition is really strong, and the way team fights should work is you'll see both Chen and Illidan aiming for priority backline targets while Uther tries to keep both Vala and Illidan up with Divine Shield. Like, that's the dream. And Tychus is just a good backbone to the composition. Laser Drill adds a lot, has good synergy on this map when contesting big objective points like the bosses and important tributes. Five, four. In this replay, I'm mostly just not going to focus on the decisions we make as a team. I'm mostly going to be focusing on like how Chen was used in this match, how we could have used Chen better, and what we did right with Chen. It's starting off, both teams send like their tri lane. We send our tri lane bottom here at the beginning. They send two people bottom and have Zeratul solo roaming. This leaves the Chen versus ETC lane matchup. While one v one lanes don't matter as much in this game as they do in others, it still has an influence on the game how well you're doing in that solo lane. This matchup specifically has a lot of ways to play it. And, um, I can't really say one way or another which hero is favored in the matchup. I definitely would say as the game goes on, Chen becomes stronger in the lane, and ETC has to use his Q and W to interrupt Chug as best he can. Conversely, when you're in lane with Chen, you have to be conscious of ETC's positioning in this matchup. Make sure that you're trying your best to stay out of range of his interrupts, while at the same time trying to keep maximum uptime on your shields. Not too much is going on in this match so far. We just have to be aware of the Zeratul's positioning on the map, especially when we later rotate to tributes. In this match, they've put a high emphasis on trying to shut down Arthalon in lane. Tychus is fairly susceptible to ganks, but like Arthlon played well in this lane and made sure we took minimum damage from the Zeratul solo room. Meanwhile, in bottom, we deny Zagara a lot of her like pushing potential with our Vala. Vala is one of those heroes that just has amazing wave clear. Now that we're about to hit level 4, that's when this lane actually becomes pretty interesting. ETC gets a lot more damage output with Echo Pedal, and that means you have to be a lot more careful with uh, when you decide to chug on Chen. You'll see Chen loses this lane a little bit until he hits level 4, and that's when he starts to just be more of a bully in lane. Zeratul comes to check out Giants. We have vision of him, but there's really nothing he can do. Deciding to do Giants this early into the game can be a risk, but we decided that it was a risk worth taking this match. Because we took Giants, and the Tribute spawned on the side where the Giants spawned, we won't get too much value out of the Giants, and early game, it's going to be hard with an Illidan and a Chen to get this early Tribute. So if we just look at the map right now, we made the decision to leave Chen in the top lane versus the ETC. If neither person in the top lane rotates, it's really not that big of a deal to just try and delay and out soak your opponents at this first tribute as long as possible. As long as we aren't dying and we keep getting these interrupts off, 
then we're actually in a pretty good spot. In the top lane, nothing's really happening, but you see as soon as I hit level 4, I, I start to become more of a bully in lane. ETC starts to run low on mana, and he starts to take a lot more poke. So we're slowly winning out that battle in the top lane while contesting this tribute. Eventually, we're going to have to give this tribute up, but we are in a pretty good spot right now. Giving up the first tribute doesn't really matter too much, and the things we benefited from by de delaying this tribute as long as possible Bottom's completely out of ammo, and top is on the verge of being drained as well, once Chen starts to dominate that lane a little bit more. Dreadnought actually goes down here, and that's a little bit of a misplay on our part, maybe a miscommunication, but it's still alright. We're in a pretty good situation, considering. We ended up getting m more soak than they did, and you can see that because they got a kill and we didn't, and we're still even in XP. So it's a pretty okay situation. Now we just send two people into the bot lane to match their duo lane, while we have Illidan doing mercenaries. The difference between Zeratul, when he's solo roaming, and having an Illidan on your team, if you do standard lanes with a single roam, more often than not, you're going to see Illidan getting a lot more value out of his time than the Zeratul, because Zeratul has to like have Malfurion help rotate to him to do these giants, and that makes their bot lane a lot weaker. Now that the um, tribute's about to spawn, I'm actually just going to go over talent choices really quick on Chen. I went Consuming Flame this match because I didn't think that the laning phase would be all that long. Um, you, it, it's The choice mostly is between Regen Master and Consuming Flame on Chen, and both of them like have their place. Uh, at level 4 on Chen, I think Swift Reflexes is one of the most powerful talents in the game. Every four seconds, Chen can dodge an enemy hero's basic attack. That's, like, pretty insane. Every four seconds is, like, a lot faster than you would think, and that denies so much damage. And then, at level seven, Chen gets one of my favorite talents in the game, Brewmaster's Balance. I think that's one of the most well-designed talents. Chen has his resource, which is Brew, right? He has a hundred of it. His W costs... 20 mana, or brew, his E costs 30 brew. And what Brewmaster's balance does is when you're at or above 50 brew, you gain increased health regen. A pretty significant amount as well. And uh, let's just read the tooltip here. While at or below 50%, or 50 brew, you gain 20% movement speed. And I'd just like to note on that as well. When you're on a mount, you have 150 40 movement, percent movement speed, I believe. And with Chen, when you have Brewmaster's Balance, while you're below 50 Brew, you have 120% movement speed. So that means you're basically on foot almost as fast as someone on their mount. Just that 20% movement speed is insane. And at the same time, you can get that increased health regen as well when you're at or above 50 Brew. That talent is, I think, one of the most well-designed talents in the game. And part of the reason why I think Chen is as strong as he is. Going into this tribute, the first tribute we ended up having to like give up, so we wanted to contest this second tribute while knights pressured mid. They don't have ETC with them, and they have giants pressuring top, so it's just a good idea in general for us to pressure this tribute hard. We end up getting on Quibsby and getting that kill. And that's really big because it allows us to take the tribute. I and that sets up for a lot of plays here. It equalizes the tribute count while allowing us to like stabilize in lanes for the most part gives us an opportunity to clear creep and try and get map control back on our side we also have the opportunity to get giants here uh, one thing that we could have done better and this may have been a misplay on our part is we should have noticed that both tributes spawned on the bottom half of the map so these giants if we cap them right as the next tribute is spawning will get a lot of value because the third tribute is guaranteed to spawn on the top half of the map the reason we didn't wait on the cap, though, was because Quibsby came to invade. The Zeratul invasion, it's a good idea, it's a good thought to try and deny the Illidan, but there's really nothing he could do there. We ended up getting that kill. And I guess it actually does end up working out extremely in our favor. We get a kill, and we cap the giants at the perfect time. If we just take a second to look at the map. The tribute's on top. This is a second tribute for us, or for them. 
They're already mostly in position for it, and Zeratul is dead. Zagara's on bottom, but the biggest threat we have on the map, we're threatening level 10, and we have giants that'll eventually threaten bottom fort. What this means is we don't have to play very aggressive on this tribute if we don't want to. Like, the giants will eventually get us level 10 by sieging bottom fort, and that way we can force the tribute. But I think what we end up doing is I think we end up just capitalizing on one of their positional mistakes, and we end up getting on Tassadar here. Tassadar goes to interrupt the tribute. And one of the most terrifying things about our composition is you cannot escape from a Chen and an Illidan together. It's actually ridiculous, their chasing potential. So now we have pressure in the bot lane. Zagara decides to stay down there and try and get as much pressure out as possible. That's a great decision on two arcs part. But this sets us up to get the boss for free. The reason why this boss is so huge for us is because we know that ETC is on top. We know that Zagara is on bottom. There's no way that they can do their boss by the time we finish theirs and go to contest theirs. The interesting thing that I personally decided to do was on Chen, once you hit level 10, you have Wandering Keg. With Wandering Keg, the enemy team cannot safely do their boss unless they have a reliable response, which would be something like Icebox, just because what you can do on Chen is after the boss dies and the capture point appears, you can get on the capture point, activate your ult, and just knock people off of it and steal their boss for free. And Chen is a tanky enough hero, you can't really kill him in that duration. And I know it's been illustrated in the past, but it wasn't illustrated in this game, the power of Chen's Wandering Keg on Cursed Hollow. But just the threat of it was enough to make them not want to do boss. As our boss was almost dead, I decided to start rotating down towards their boss to threaten them with that Wandering Keg. And that's why you see me break off from my team right here. Now we have a boss threatening top, as a tribute that threatens a curse for us is going to spawn. They start their boss, I make sure to show myself once my team's close enough, I walk on the creep. They know they can't safely do boss anymore, and this is the start of a team fight. Now as this team fight breaks out, I'm just gonna like, try my best to explain to you guys what my goals as the Chen are in this fight. I don't illustrate it perfectly in this fight, but what your goals should be are, you wanna try and isolate the focus target, which in this situation would be Panucci and Traitor, based off their positioning, away from their healer. That's what you want to do with the Wandering Keg as best as you can. Aside from your goals with Keg, you want to try and absorb as much damage as possible with your Chug talent, because that gives you a periodic shield over time. And as this fight breaks out, we see Kale has pretty good positioning on the side. We start off by focusing Malfurion, and right here is where I'd like to just pause for a moment. They use Void Prism to isolate Dreadnought and the laser from the backline targets, and they get on KO. That's a pretty scary situation. We look at Tykes' positioning. He's pretty far down, and he's going to be able to come up and intercept both Chubbs and Traitor. Now that Tassadar has used Archon, and Zagar has used a lot of her cooldowns, it's a pretty good time for both Illidan and I to use our cooldowns. So you'll see me here use the barrel. Now what I did with this barrel is I made sure Tassadar and ETC, who was one of the focus tar targets, were very isolated from their healers. Both KO and Dreadnought, with the help of the laser, focused that wall. Chen and Illidan and Tychus stay on the Zagara. The barrel there was mostly just to spread out the team fight because our team is stronger in a spread out team fight than theirs is, and it works out for in our favor extremely well. At the same time. We have a boss pressuring top, which is going to do a lot of damage while a cursed tribute spawns. We actually make a misplay here. We didn't really take into consideration that they still had stage dive up, and that punishes us here. So that's just a good play on 2 part. A little bit of a miscommunication. But in the end, it's not a curse for them. It's not the worst thing to happen for us, and we're still sitting in a very good spot. We have the boss pressuring top. It really won't threaten too much anymore, but it's enough to force them to back for this XP. Now that being said, our knights are about to spawn. That'll give us some pressure on the map for when the fifth tribute spawns, and the fifth tribute is extremely important. This is actually a really smart decision on Soldier's part, because he saw they were all on their 
half of the map. And if we scouted with the clairvoyance that they had started their boss, he would have taken their giants. And e even if they did get their boss, we would have gotten our knights and their giants, and the fifth tribute would have spawned. We would have had more pressure on the map with our two mercenary camps than they would have had with their one. So right now we're just trying to soak as much as XP as possible, try and hit level 13 before they do going into this next fight. We don't have the time to do giants because the, the fifth tribute spawns right then. And right now, every ultimate is off cooldown. This is game deciding fight. This next fight decides, like, who's going to have the momentum going into the rest of this match. So we start off with soldier capping, and I go in there. I know I'm extremely safe to just sit there and chug. And if you think about my positioning here on Chen, I've absorbed five players' cooldowns and damage for about, like, three seconds. That allows us to almost get a cap, and it allows us to get in good position for this team fight. My goals for this team fight again are to isolate the focus targets, and that's either going to be Trader in this situation or ETC, depending on if he overextends. With the keg, I want to try and make it so Malfurion does not get value out of his tranquility, and you'll see me do that while isolating Panucci in this team fight. So as it plays out, Void Prism goes down on Panucci. There's the laser drill. Ko gets an amazing strafe. And I keep Malfurion away from the ETC long enough to make him go to critical HP. We end up finishing the Malfurion, and like I said before, you can't really run away from a Chen or Nilodin, so we just kind of like clean up this fight at that point. Now we have a curse on them. We still have Knights pressuring mid, and their boss is up and ready for the taking. So what we want to do in this situation is push down middle fort, look to push down bottom fort if that's possible, and then get ready to contest their boss. A couple things we do in this situation, like we're executed extremely well, you'll see after we do take mid fort, we take bottom fort, and while the enemy team is worried about us taking their boss and positioning to deal with that, you'll see us take our giants just so we can get extra pressure on the map. At level 13 on Chen, you want to go Relentless, especially against an ETC, because it's very hard to kill a Chen if you can't like blow him up in your first CC because of his trait, his chug. He can absorb tons of damage. Right now, we have a huge minion wave. We can siege this for free, back up to our giants for free as well, just put more pressure on the map. In the mid lane, we still have waves pressuring from the curse, the same within the top lane. We're just kind of spreading them extremely thin right now. Our boss is spawning in 50 seconds, so basically what's going through our heads right now is we want to make sure they do not do their boss, we're in position to contest their boss, and we'll be ready to rotate to our boss when it spawns. These giants put some extra pressure on bottom. And ETC does have stage dive. It's not super safe to, like, go for their boss. But we were just fortunate enough for Zagara. She even checked as well, checked that brush. And it was just, like, unfortunate timing on Z Z Z Zagara's part. But she was just going to try and lay creep. But that pick, like, ends up giving us just a ton of momentum in this match. They end up taking giants and deciding to push top for it. After Zagara died, that's probably the best play they could make considering the circumstance, because they could not contest this boss with only four people. During this time, our boss has spawned. Zagar is spawning in 10 seconds. We have a boss and two giants threatening their keep. That's, like, immensely terrifying. And they end up staggering backs here a little bit. And this, what I'm about to show you guys, just illustrates even at the current highest level of play there can be massive miscommunications um this mostly was on our part i'll try and point it out a little bit but positionally and our targeting like there was definitely a miscommunication here we see both etc and tacitar trying to escape this situation both are okay targets but as you can see uther just kind of like runs between two targets because we have Ko and Tychus, Ko and Arthalon are focusing ETC over here, which isn't a bad decision, and we have both Soldier and I focusing the Tassadar over here, which also isn't a bad decision. It's just the biggest 
thing you have to worry about when you're trying to play as a team. You can't be torn on decisions. Like Even if a decision is wrong, it's better to follow up as five instead of just being split on two good decisions. And because of this indecision, our Uther just didn't know which side to support. And that just kind of makes this fight less clean. Even still, it ends up going extremely well for us. I think we hit 16 tier during this fight. But Soldier gets a heal, and he pops a metamorphosis. And this it also just illustrates how tanky Chen can be in the right situation. I did not want them to escape, so I used Barrel there to bring Malfurion into our backline. I got a Divine Shield and chugged a significant amount of their damage just so they couldn't finish me off. We get two kills there for free, potentially a third. We do get a third, and this will allow us to get top keep. Because of how much pressure we had on bottom, all of the dancing and fighting we did on top just let our bottom mercenaries do work. It gave us that bottom keep for free. With Chen, you can tank up a lot of like turret damage and stuff like that, and just like make it 100% safe to do the keep. Quipsby goes in for a little bit of poke and ends up getting punished for it. That just allows us to secure this keep 100%. Now we can back off in this situation, secure tribute so they do not get a curse, while after that preparing for our boss. Right now we're in like the ideal situation on Cursed Hollow. We're three levels up, we have two keeps on them, and I feel like we're playing pretty well as a team. There were some mistakes we've made and stuff, but right now they give up the tribute. Illidan and Tychus head to take our knights, and after we take our knights, we position for our boss. Going for boss is a little bit greedy in this situation, but because we have heroes that are so good at contesting points, like Tychus with laser drill, and Chen with keg, also um, Dreadnought with divine shield is also really good at contesting points, and that'll be illustrated here soon. We start our boss here, and they know what's up. Two arc makes the right call to try and contest this boss. And I'm just chugging as much damage as possible. They end up making it in time before we could finish the boss. Zagara does something here that catches us off guard a little bit, and it almost wins them the fight. But as you can see, there's the stage dive. They void prism to three of us. It's only Soldier and I alive on the point. They, I had used Keg to try and push them off point to secure the cap, but Zagara smartly uses Maw right here. That pushes me off the point, so then now the three people who were in Void Prism can actually like be useful in this fight now. But Soldier had to get back on that point, or else this potentially was like game losing. And once they get out, Dreadnought Divine Shields the Illidan here. The Divine Shield on point just gives Illidan so much value in this team fight. On top of that, they had already used all of their CC, so I know it's safe for me to chug on point and just absorb even more of that damage. So right now, we just have an Illidan going ham on the point, just cleaning up everything. KO in the back ends up taking a lot of damage from the Zeratul, but Illidan here just carries this team fight. Illidan decides to chase Quibsby, and Arthlon has an interesting exchange to say the least with Furiously. He said on comms that he thought the Tassadar had died when he slash danced, but I don't even know what goes through his head sometimes. <laughs> that was like, oh man, I bust up laughing so hard during that. Now we have a boss threatening core. Tychus and Illidan both alive. We could have attempted to end the game here, but what we do instead is just a safer play because we have three dead. We end up going for the third keep just to secure it. And basically, if you're three keeps down on Cursed Hollow, it's extremely hard to come back. So I think, yeah, we just get mid-keep here and back up to their knights. Just to make sure there's so much pressure on their base, they can't ever leave it, and we just get free objectives all day. We end up regrouping at their knights. Yeah, it, it's questionable. We potentially could have ended, but that's an extremely risky play. So we end up just looking for 20 advantage, taking their knights for that pressure. We can back up to our giants. The next objective we really want to worry about is their boss spawning in 30 seconds. 
This tribute's also extremely important because, again, it's the tenth tribute of the game. Uh, it's another one of those do or die situations for two arc. So they group up, even though they're 20 advantage down and they're two levels down, they just have to give this their best shot. This team fight, I aggressively start zoning with my chug. They can't really damage me. And we have the level 20 laser drill, right? The range on this thing is insane. If we protect this laser drill, we'll win this team fight. Essentially, no matter what. So what I try to do with Barrel here is, again, isolate the ETC while all of our damage is on him and make sure that he just takes the brute of the damage while keeping Malfurion when Tranquility is used away from the team. They get a really good VP, but they're at such a disadvantage, it's really hard to win at this point in the game. We get another Divine Shield on Illidan that just is great. And we just kind of clean up this fight, and that's all she wrote, essentially. Testar's dead now. We have a lot of stuff already pressuring their core. And... Yep. That's game. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, if you guys like the video, like it. If you dislike it, dislike it. Uh, give us any feedback you can. We all always appreciate it. And be sure to subscribe because we're going to be doing a lot more content soon. Thanks guys, and I'll see you next time.